Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. Today, follow along with us on the homestead. They're calling for a killing frost here in the next couple days. So we got a few little odds and ends things that we got to get picked and uh, just kind of the last harvest of the summer season. So we've been blessed with a ton of peppers and I can't wait to show y'all that. But first, we got to get our chickens moved. For those of you that may be new to the channel, we do raise pasture raised eggs. Um, so our chickens are in this mobile chicken house that we move throughout our pasture. So got to get them moved first. And we got a few new members of the Homestead family that we're going to show you too. Before we move on to the next thing, there's something with this net in here I wanna I wanna talk about real quick. We've mentioned it before in a previous video, but just in case you didn't see it, anytime on this poultry netting that you're using it, make sure that that bottom run right there is up on the fiberglass post. After they get some wear on them, it'll start slipping down and getting around that metal rod and it'll ground it out. And if you can't figure out why in the world your net kills the power every time you hook it up to it, that's probably why. We searched and searched and searched that issue for a long time, trying to figure out what in the world was killing the power on our fence. And I just happened to see that one day. It wasn't popping or anything. So now every time we move this net, that's one thing we have to check on is that. Because when you take your foot and push down on those pegs, you drag down the side of the post and to push it right down there on top of it and you won't even know you've done it. And walk over here and plug it up. But, so the way we do now with our chickens, we used to come down here and shut the door every night. And uh, now the only night we shut the door is the night before we're getting ready to move them. And so, what, so far what we've discovered, knock on wood, I better knock on wood because I don't want to brag here. But this right here, electric netting keeps our chicken safe at all times. Because we have to make sure that we've constantly got power on our fence. Because this net keeps the critters out. And so far, y'all, it works. We've been doing this now all, all year, haven't we, without opening mm -hmm. the door. I mean, without shutting the door. We've been moving chickens for three years. But yeah, but we had been... Yeah. Uh, coming and closing the door every night. So we decided just to give it a try because, you know, that kind of gets old when your chickens are a decent ways away from your house. And moving them around the pastures the way we do, you know, we'd have to run back and forth. It's a it's walkable distance, but if you want to do it quickly, it's not walkable. So we decided to leave it open and it has worked so far, this net. So that's why we kind of always run our chickens around the perimeter of our fence so we can get access to the uh, to the electric wire here. And it's working so far. And we have a ton of people, especially locally here, who ask us, well, don't you ever have hawks or anything like that come down and get a chicken? So far in the past three years of doing it like this, no, we have not. And the only reason we can con we can only thing we can even think of why not is because we keep these guineas in here with our chickens and we've been down here before and like a buzzard or something fly over and them things go to squawking and making all kinds of noise and all them chickens will huddle up under that uh house right there so it's almost like they're an alarm clock <laughs> and they they sound the alarm and the chickens go under the house and everybody stays safe with them so 
we try to keep guineas in here all the time they get a little bit annoying because they are loud and um that's one reason our chickens kind of stay a little ways away from our house because i can't stand the sound of them giddies they get on my nerves but um because they constantly making some kind of noise but um yeah anytime anything overhead flies over they go to squawking and them chickens huddle up under the house and it's almost like they're little guard dogs or something so i just thought i'd throw that little tip in there for you too one more thing because one other question that we get while we're talking about the chickens is how we keep our chickens in this netting um i think a lot of people have trouble with their chickens flying over we don't clip their wings we don't do anything like that the brutal truth is if they fly out and can't figure out how to get back in i guess they get got because <laughs> that's just and that doing it that way the last three years we have come you know what we have left is the good chickens and that sounds pretty terrible but I mean, that's nature's way of weeding out the ones that are doing what we don't want them to do, so. Now, that's not saying that we don't have them not get out. Yeah, but they figure out how to get back in. Yeah, they get out all the time. We have them fly out of this fence, and they'll get out here. That's another reason they're away from the house is because sometimes, anytime they run out of food down here, you know it, because the chickens start flying over the net, and they're out scratching everywhere. Well, when they're closer to the house, they're out there scratching in the gardens and everything else, and so we kind of keep them far enough away from the house that they don't do that. But yeah, that's that's a good point there. That usually if one gets out and it can't figure out how to get back in, or you know, okay. we'll let them in maybe once or twice, and if something gets them, it gets them. We we don't we don't deal with it. <laughs> so just be warned. This one might be a little loud. <laughs> so I've got a good friend that buys calves and puts them on a nurse cow. And we loved that Jersey beef so much. We we got these calves from her. We got two little jerseys uh, here and a Holstein uh, steer. They're all three steers. Um, but yeah, these are the newest additions. We added three more mouths to feed this winter, didn't yep, we, Andy? <laughs> like, like we needed it. And we don't have no grass because it's been so dry here. All of our grass is, is eat down. Um, <laughs> But the reason they're making so much noise is because uh, they've just recently been weaned, they've been banded, and they're in a new place. So they had a rough day yesterday. <laughs> but they will be very much loved for the year or so mm. they'll be with us. We gotta clean that water up. And, uh, but yeah, like I said, if you've never tried Jersey beef, I recommend it if you ever have the opportunity. That's probably some of the best beef we've ever had. And when we found out she had these calves, we were like, yes, that's what we want to raise for beef. So as crazy as that sounds, I never thought I'd be the person that said that. <laughs> and they're pretty tame little calves too. They're not wild or nothing. They're a little small. They were weaned a little bit earlier than I'd like them to be weaned, but um, we have weaned calves that early before and they, they do okay. Um, you, we might notice a little bit of a stunt in their growth, which ain't really what we want, but it's to be just, expected. Yeah, it's to be expected. they just pretty as they want to be, though, and the kids were so excited because they get an old McDonald cow. <laughs> yeah, they've never had a black and white cow, and they're so excited about that. So we've got them put up in here in this little stall. Um, just for now, for the next few days, um, just letting them get used to the place and used to us. I've never liked just... Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've never liked just turning calves or cows or anything out straight into a pasture when they don't know you or are not used to the place. So it's nice to keep them up for just a few days, kind of get them figuring things out, and then we're going to turn them out into this pasture here where, where Lovey stays. But I guess you could say that that's next year's beef and possibly the year after's beef. And uh, um, now Megan's cows, the two milk cows, are supposed to be bred, and we think they are bred. I hope so. All I'm the all the pretty, signs. I'm about 100 percent sure Bill is Candy. I'm a little iffy, but she's real big bodied, so it's really hard to tell. Right, and so they may have little heifers, and if they do, we probably won't want to eat those. But if they have little uh, bulls. You know, that would be beef too, but that's going to be... Well, they ain't even born yet. Yeah, they're yet. not even born yet, so that's a that's a few years down the road. This right here 
having beef on foot is about the best way you can store beef because you don't have to worry about it uh keeping it cool you don't have to worry about freezing it you don't have to worry about power going out or anything like that it's there ready for well it ain't quite ready for us right now <laughs> but uh, we were hungry enough. i guess so <laughs> but it's it's going to be there waiting on us and this is kind of like you know sort of in a way i don't want to say like a being a prepper or nothing but this is sort of like a preparedness item as long as you've got something to feed it and keep it going um you've got beef right there waiting for you so three cows worth of beef that's a pretty good amount of beef yeah the jerseys that's the only thing about <clears throat> the jerseys is they grow pretty slow um so like the last jersey that we did she was actually pretty small but we got more meat off of her than we thought we would yeah it done it turned so, out real nice yeah um if you wonder why we're slower than ever if you watch any old videos you'll see why <laughs> yeah yeah we that last one we ate was a heifer and she was a little rambunctious <laughs> yeah we didn't want her around here let's put her that way she was a cold cow <laughs> but maggie there she loves these calves she's still in her pajamas don't judge yeah this is her pajamas y'all <laughs> they're just pretty as they want to be they are only thing is, y'all, can't get getting too attached to them. That's right, Maggie Moo. If you give them names, you need to give them names like hamburger and and cube steak and something like that. Speaking of cube steak, I gotta go put that in the crock pot. That's what we have in the night. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, come back down here and feed them and water them in just a minute. Let's go get this here last minute harvest i guess you'd say our last time harvest done all right so we're out here in our raised beds you can see see that everything's still looking really good um after tuesday night it ain't gonna look like this so we got to get through and we're gonna pick everything that the frost may kill so first question though got peppers galore I have give away peppers. I have froze peppers. I have dried peppers. I have made cowboy candy. Y'all make sure to leave in the comments your favorite things to do with fresh peppers or how you like to keep them. Uh, Cause I really don't want them to go to waste. We're gonna go ahead and pick them. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Next thing we've got is some green beans. We've probably got enough to make a good meal out of and uh these things really took a hit back in the summer and dried up and died out real bad and i never pulled them out or anything I just kind of let them go so i had a feeling they may come back out and some of them did and the ones that did had the prettiest green beans on them that you've ever seen and so i which i know green beans like cooler weather and we've had cooler weather but you know it's it's amazing but they were like this day look, look at that yeah yeah, they were this dead. Yeah, they, they look like nasty. that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just a few of them come back out. Not all of them did. So we're going to pick those there too. And I'm sure our marigolds are going to get fried. And then potatoes are going to get fried. Which now the potatoes are, um, we kind of just done a little experiment to see. As soon as we dug our potatoes out of this bed, we put a few potatoes back in the ground. And left them actually i believe we used some of the ones that had green on them yep we stuck them back in the ground and um just wanted to see if they'd have time to make potatoes there's no way these things have been growing long enough to make potatoes and i i didn't think we'd have time for a second crop but just wanted to try it and see i'll probably dig a couple of them up just to see what's under there um but let's get with it y'all look here i actually got several more green beans than i thought i was gonna get that's about a half a five gallon bucket full so what i may do is just put them in the refrigerator and uh we'll just eat on some fresh green beans the next week or two instead of canning some i've got plenty of canned green beans look what come out from under one tiger all right those were fangolins if anybody's wondering well look at them i know ain't they cute so we got a few potatoes so come to find out there was a couple of potatoes under there that 
where the actual potato we planted. And uh, I don't know. They may still be good to eat. I don't know if they are or not. But these are the new ones. Those, yeah. are, those are bright red. They're yeah, pretty. Yeah, we got a few. Now, there's some potatoes over here in this bed, too. Not me. So the only thing we got left growing are these spoon tomatoes here. Y'all who know, I'm not a tomato person. So I hadn't even tried them. <laughs> but Megan says they're delicious, but they're tiny. Yeah, you said they're tiny. They, they like half Let's big. find one. Because I don't like cherry tomatoes. Check that out. Because they're too big to be a bite size. Little bitty tomatoes. And they're loaded with them in there. There's been a lot more on here, but there's still plenty of them left. So Megan says she's gonna eat her a salad tonight with supper and come out here and pick what's left of those. And we also have a black cherry tomato right here that uh, has finally took off and started growing. But ain't none of them got quite ripe yet. I know they look right, but they're not quite ripe I yet. I tried one while ago. I promise they're not ripe. Yeah. <laughs> so that thing's probably going to got, get got. Um, we're just going to leave it there and see if they ripen up or not. That's about it. We've got cabbage and collards growing over here. They're looking good. Yeah. They're looking really good. And then these, I can't remember which one's which. This is either a bed full of kale or a bed full of mustard greens. And then this one over here is a bed full of kale or mustard greens. One or two. I can't remember. I think this actually is the mustard greens and that's the kale. That's both of these are planted just a little bit late. And then these are the collards and the cabbage and the green, uh, the broccoli that y'all saw us start. Look, she's eating her tomato over there. <laughs> Might as well enjoy it while I can. Um, but y'all saw us start those in the, uh, what do you call it? A grow, the grow friend kit. The grow friend mm -hmm. kit, that's right. That little seed starting kit that, um, that we made a video on here, I don't know, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And I'll be sure to link that video if, honestly guys, with Christmas coming up, if you've got somebody in your family that likes to garden and stuff and has limited space as far as starting seeds, it would be awesome. Yep. We're those people that have a limited space when it comes to starting seeds in the winter time. So. Yep. And um, these are running behind, which y'all saw in that video. We were running way late on starting our college and everything. That's why we have these up here. Cause I actually just went by the local feed store and bought some to put in just to make sure we'd have some before it got too cold outside. Which these will keep growing until it gets like really freezing cold. cold. Mm -hmm. And then it may take them out for you. Depends on how long it takes, how long it stays cold. They'll continue growing right mm -hmm. into the springtime. Yeah, we'll have, I mean, I've had years that I've had collards and uh, you know, salad, mustard greens and stuff all through the winter like i constantly go out there and pick it now it don't grow a whole lot during that time but yeah but it will if you get a good warm day in january it'll put on some new growth yeah but now last year we didn't have that luxury because mm -hmm. and, and the year before we didn't in december we had a, a, a big freeze and it lasted for like two or three days and it wiped that stuff out it wasn't the year before it was several years back we also had a big snow Yep. And the snow laid around in the shady areas for uh, like weeks. And now that killed it too, where it was like yep. laying under that snow and we didn't go uncover them. Right. Um, but that's but, really, other than that, during the cold season here anyway, we're in zone 7A. They come on with it, they do just fine. It's hard to believe there's supposed to be a good frost here in the next couple of days because it is hot out here today. Welcome to North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> I think they said by Tuesday it's supposed to be starting to get down in the, in the 20s at night. And, uh, it's and supposed then, to be 80 degrees one day and 50 the next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how big of a change we're fixing to face here. Yep. And we have had no rain. No rain at all since... Gosh, back in August was our last real good Not rain, good one, yeah. and it's now almost November. Let's get uh, some of that comfrey too. I'm gonna take some of that in and dry. Okay. 
we'll do it long. Now the first frost won't. I don't know, it's about killed them up there in the front. Yeah, it's, like, it's dry. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's dry. I found out this country don't like dry weather. That's about probably clean. I already got some in there. I do want to cut my mint though. We'll cut some of this and give to the pigs later on. Well, Y'all, one thing we've noticed about this country, we've had several hot, dry weeks this summer. And uh, anywhere this country is out in the full sun, it does not like the dry weather at all. It just flops it plumb to the ground. We actually had some over here on a bank where the dirt is dry anyways. And I just thought it'd be a good place for it because I assumed it was really tough and it actually died. It completely died and has not come back out. I didn't even know you could kill it. Yeah, I thought it was supposed to be indestructible, but um, but now, you know, in other places it's thrived all summer long. It just depends on, I guess, the soil type and stuff there. But what's that you cut now, you say? Mint? Mint, yeah. I don't know if the frost will hurt the mint, but I'm scared I, it will. I'm not sure if it does or not. And this makes a delicious tea. Here's our harvest. We've got a few seeds right there. We've got green beans and some potatoes. That'll be for supper tonight. We've got some peppers, almost a five gallon bucket, about three quarters of a five gallon bucket. And then Megan got her a little bit of comfrey and some mint she's gonna dry. Yep. So that's about it for us. I think that's uh kind of like the official we do this every year it's kind of the official wind down right before the frost so. it's the official end of it yep. of the summer garden anyways you know we still got the greens and stuff growing in there yeah, these cold crops yeah they're like they no nothing. maintenance you don't do nothing <laughs> yeah. however i have been out here watering like crazy because it ain't rain yeah. it's it's getting bad here y'all i don't know if you can see the pastures how brown they are they should be like very lush and green right now this time of year that that cool season the fescue and all that usually comes out and is just growing like crazy right now and it's 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 cooked yeah our cows are already eating hay so. yeah we're feeding hay like crazy right now it's it's awful yep but we'll see if we get some or not but anyways guys we sure appreciate y'all watching and all the continued support hope you learned a little something from this video um I'll be sure to link our garden and playlist down below if you want to see what it was like this summer and all what we do around here. And anyways, guys, till we see you on the next one, y'all have a good one. Thanks for watching, y'all.